Welcome to Gospel Greetings number 119. Today we continue in our series on the book, The Ten Second Rule by Claire de Graff. Last week we started with chapter one of this book called A Rule of Life from John 14, 15, which says, If you love me, you will obey what I command. And here is the 10 second rule boiled right down. Just do the next thing you're reasonably certain Jesus wants you to do and commit to it immediately in the next 10 seconds before you change your mind. I'm not talking about who you're going to marry or should you buy a company. I'm talking about as you're walking through your life day to day. Now this week we will be continuing with chapter 2 called Dueling Voices from Luke 9.23. Then he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. In this chapter, de Graff goes deeper into what obedience looks like day to day and reminds Christians of the dueling voices in their head, one calling for obedience and the other calling for self-preservation and comfort. It was kind of like Flip Wilson on TV years ago as the Reverend Leroy talking about these dueling voices, and when he fell, he'd say, the devil made me do it. Well, de Graff calls Christians out of living lives of kind of a partial surrender and claiming grace covers them for the rest of a sort of cop-out on living a fully surrendered life. And the key to this sinful habit of disobedience is that we do not live minute by minute. We're not really willing to obey the next thing the Lord asks us to do. So beginning to turn that into obedience, we begin to just do what he's asking moment by moment. He says the primary reason some of us aren't making more progress on living more godly lives is that we've made peace with our consciences. We've come to what we think is a reasonable balance between sin and surrender, a compromise we can live with and one we think God is okay with too. We tell ourselves that Jesus died not just for our past sins, but for our present and future ones as well. That is true. We have been forgiven. But that can also be a powerful incentive to settle for partial surrender, for that's just good enough. Now, de Graff isn't talking about the dangers of taking God's grace in vain. I'm not talking about earning God's favor through works or a works righteousness. I'm talking about receiving the favor, grace of mercy in God, and then giving him nothing in return. Claire talks about God's grace being supplied for us for what we can't do, not for what we won't do. Remember when Jesus said in Matthew 6 not to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself? It's as if Jesus is trying to say to you and me, just start here today. Trust me. When you and I give up trying to figure out it all ahead of time and just simply follow Jesus daily, hourly, and in the next 10 seconds doing whatever he asks us to do, we'll actually move closer to that previously elusive ideal of absolute surrender than we ever dreamed possible. And that's exactly what dying or surrendering daily to the will of God means. I can hear someone saying, hey, wait a minute, Kari, this sounds like legalism. But the exact opposite is true. Jesus in love has given everything for us so that we can have every spiritual gift now and forever. He then asks us to surrender to his love and to obey him. Is there something you need to surrender to Jesus today? Because it comes down to a decision, a personal decision to be far more serious about being like Jesus at home, at the office, even at the golf course than you've been before.